working as a nanny while taking courses to complete a college degree in hopes to fulfill a lifelong dream of becoming a teacher. Though one might say she's already begun teaching by openly sharing her story tonight. For more information about self-injury and how to seek help for yourself or for someone you care about, you can visit our website at www.dateline.msnbc.com. Coming up next, what caused Olympic medalist Dominique Mochianu to run away from home to live in hiding? If my dad would talk to me or if he tried to get me back, I knew that he could hurt me. Her name has been in the headlines, but where is Dominique? Tonight, in an exclusive interview with Jane Pauling, the gymnast speaks out. All right, listen up. You know Snap.com is America's fastest growing search engine on the web. You know it's easy. You know it's convenient. You know it'll get you what you need on the web when you need it. So log on to Snap.com now and get a free email account. Plus, while you're there, check out all the other cool free stuff you can get at Snap.com. Free email and a ton of free stuff. So what are you waiting for? Visit Snap.com right now. The big new search engine from NBC. Franklin Perry may have the safest house on Bristol Court, thanks to Liberty Mutual. Wow! A Carnotaurus Cepetus. That's one mean bush. We have over 500 home safety tips, including how to prevent break-ins. The ancient Greeks called this the bush of pain. Tips like planting prickly bushes under your windows and installing deadbolt locks. Safer, more secure lives. That's the freedom of liberty. Liberty Mutual. You always do better on menswear at Burlington Coat Factory. So I can get two suits for the price of what I'd normally pay uh, for one suit elsewhere. I love it here. It's a great saving. I find the designers and the labels that I like at a much better price than department stores. You don't have to spend a lot of money to look good here. Any designer that you need is here. I can get any kind of style I want. I get my money's worth at Burlington Coat Factory. Burlington Coat Factory, we're more than great coats. Where do you see the Ray Dollar gave me on the convertible? Sorry. With great rates right at the airport, it's no wonder so many vacations start at Dollar. I believe this is my stop. Welcome to Dollar, sir. Off to the beach. Where your vacation ends up, however, is another story. Well, we're here. Dollar makes sense. Later on an all-new Tonight Show, Just Shoot Me, David Spade reveals how staying healthy can be fun. She goes, this might hurt a little bit. I go, it better. And plus, Kate Capshaw's big surprise. Yeah, like catching her hubby Steven Spielberg backstage with Dina Carter. DC Garbage and Tasty Headlines. Cat Nuggets. <laughs> and Conan has got Jay Moore, NBC Tonight. When these two shared their first kiss, they knew it could never happen again. Do you have a husband? She can't have him, but she doesn't want him to be with anyone else. You can't see Allie for who she really is. I want to share my life with someone. Someone who is available. You want me to pine away for the rest of my life over something I can never have? Days of Our Lives, NBC Daytime. Dateline, honored by American women in radio and television with three Gracie Awards, more than any other news magazine, continues. Now from Studio 3B, Jane Pauley. It's become a very public battle about a very private matter. The loss of trust between a teenager and her parents and the need for independence. It might sound familiar to any family with teenagers who chafe at the fact that parents make the rules. Imagine how complicated it might be if the child made the money. Dominique Mochianu is the pixie gymnast who captured our hearts at the Atlanta Olympics. Fame brought with it fortune at a very young age. But now it looks like a wedge that's driving this family apart. For more than a week, her family hasn't even known where she was. None of us did until now. There were so many rumors because nobody knew where you were. Uh, you were in hiding. What were you hiding from? Well, I was hiding because I was scared. Of what? Well, if I went back home or if my dad would talk to me or if he'd try to get me back, I knew that he could hurt me. The first time you met Dominique Mochianu, she was really just a little girl, 14 years old. The youngest gymnast at the Atlanta Olympics, the mascot of the Magnificent Seven, who won America's first ever team gold medal. 
You know America feels they have a proprietary interest in you. You are the littlest one. What are we to make of where you find yourself now? That little girl. The little girl's grown up. That she has. Six inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than she was in Atlanta. But is she grown up enough to be out on her own at only 17? I just, you know, think not only think, I know that this is the right thing for me to do in my heart. I believe it very much. Eight days ago in Houston, she told her parents she wouldn't be coming home anymore. On Tuesday, her father and mother, Dimitri and Camelia, were served with legal documents which, in effect, are her emancipation proclamation. They haven't seen their daughter in ten days. Not until now. Did you have any idea you'd be appearing on network television to explain yourself within a week? No, I had no idea that it would get this big or go this far. What she wants is the legal right to control her life, her future, and her money. Today, even an amateur can command high fees for appearances and endorsements. Some people say that you may have earned Wanda as high as $4 million so I far. Have. Is that, that possible? Be, that could be very possible. I don't know. Nobody ever told me. From the time when you were 14 and you started really earning money, do you, did you ever see checks? Did, do you have, did you ever know how, many, how much money you would be making for an appearance? No. When I was young, I had no clue. I, I didn't even know they were paid a lot of times. Nobody would tell me. I didn't know about the money. I didn't care. I did it because I loved to, and that was that. On tour after the Olympics, she began to catch on that there was money being made. The older gymnasts had money set aside, so where was hers? I was shocked a little bit that, you know, when you're younger and you work, you don't have a right to have any of the money. Everything is the parents. They can spend it all? They can spend it all if they wanted to. The law doesn't say spend, it says manage. And in fact, her parents say they run a trust that controls her earnings until she's 35. She says she found that out not from her parents, but from the morning paper. I just read in the newspaper that it was 35. I could be married, have a kid, you know, have children, and go on with my life, be very successful, and there could be nothing in there at 35. Her father's lawyer, Catherine Scardino, says there were no secrets about money. All she had to do was go to her mother and her father and sit down at a kitchen table with a cup of coffee or a glass of milk and say, hey, I want answers. But none of that was ever, none of that ever occurred. Dominique claims she did try to get answers. I said, I want to start putting money away for my future. And he says, why, why do you need that? The gym is all your earnings. The gym is, you know, what you're going to get later on. And this is your business, you know? This is the gym her father built with her money. And he says with her blessing, a state-of-the-art 70,000-square-foot gymnasium, the largest of its kind in the country. It bears her name, but is it hers? Is it paid for? Is it making money? Dominique says her parents won't tell her. And her friend and mentor, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Thomas, who runs a gym himself, is skeptical. In a gym that large, it's kind of hard to believe that they would actually be able to cover their expenses. I can't depend on the gym right now because I don't know what's going on. And they'd kind of get mad and be like, you know, it's okay, you don't need to. And sometimes when I, I got into an argument last time we talked and he said, um, fine, then if you're going to make some money or put it away, you're going to have to pay for your car, for your coats, this and that. She contends she was already paying for everything, that she's been the family's only source of income since she was 14. What about the seven-day weeks, the 10, 12-hour days? Your father says that he invested in the gymnasium. Wasn't that a job? It was. Maybe it was, but he did this, and he knew what he was getting into. He's an adult. I never said build a 70,000 square foot gym. I never said to blow everything or not even blow, but just use everything into that gym. Can this be the same Dominique Mochianu who wrote in her autobiography at age 13? My parents were the best. They supported me strongly and encouraged me in every way they could. Both her mother and her father had been gymnasts in their native Romania. And from the day Dominique was born, they were dreaming of her future medals. And, of course, it all came true. It was awesome. I can just picture it right now. I, I remember just being up there and raising that flag and knowing that all of us deserved every bit of it. Could you have been there without your parents? Maybe not. Maybe so. I mean, 
I credit my parents a lot for being there, supporting me. Sometimes I think they were a little too hard on me or tough on me. After Atlanta, Dominique seemed to have lost her winning ways. Her growth spurt took some getting used to. She went through several coaches, but finally found a soulmate in Romanian Luminita Mishenko, who coached her to a comeback gold medal in the Goodwill Games two months ago. Despite the success, or maybe because of it, her coach and her dad did not get along. Did he sense that she was coming between the two of you? I don't know, but I just knew something wasn't right, and that's not the first time. Her dad says the coach made unreasonable demands. She's given us a lot, a lot of trouble. She's not happy here. She demands a lot of money from us. He said, well, I can't take it anymore. I've had it up to here with her. I asked, well, what am I going to do? He said, we'll either find you a new coach or you'll quit gymnastics. We'll close the gym down. And I said, that should be my decision. That's not fair. I've worked so hard to get back where I'm at. And now I'm just going to throw it all away? And a week ago Saturday, she claims what was supposed to be a routine training session turned ugly. My dad just jumped up and started accusing her, calling names and, you know, being very rude and, you know, really angry. So he fired her? Yes. That was the flashpoint. But Dominique says her desire to leave had been smoldering for some time. If he hadn't fired her that day, would we be here today? I don't know. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. I knew it was going to happen one day. This all really started about a year ago. Kurt Thomas and his wife Becky were putting Dominique up in their home while she trained at his gym near Dallas. She says she confided in her mom about her plans. I trusted my mom and I told her about what I was going to do. And she told my dad, I guess, because the next day I knew that he came up and got me immediately. You know, it was, no, Dominique, get up, let's go. Get your stuff, go to Kurt's, pack your stuff, let's go home. You're going home with me, that's it. I was forced to go back home and, you know, do whatever I had to do and, you know, just stay there. So you blamed your mother for betraying your confidence? Um, I don't know if I blame her. I don't know, but I just, I guess, wasn't strong enough to go through with it. She'd seen other elite gymnasts do it. Mary Lou Retton and Dominique's friend, Shannon Miller, both had won legal independence from their parents when they were still teenagers. And last week, Dominique finally decided she was strong enough to make the break for good. By the time she told her parents she was leaving, she was already gone. I called home and I said, um, Mom, Dad, I'm not coming home. You know, the next time you hear from me will be from a lawyer. And I just hung up. She was as good as her word. Two days later, Houston lawyer Roy Moore not only filed her petition in court to be declared a legal adult, he also won a restraining order to keep her parents away from her. So I can't Friends say, say Dominique that. feared her I dad. That Dominique has indicated to me that she's frightened of him uh, and that, uh, I mean, she has told me that uh, he has gotten physical before. Well, he's hit me a couple times and so has my mom and he'd intimidate me and just a lot of things. I mean, a lot of deeper issues. Her father says that's not true. We, I don't believe we fight. We never fight together. Because she even says that you hit her. I hit her? I don't remember. While she has no regrets about leaving her parents, she also left behind a little sister, nine-year-old Christina. I love her more than anything in this world, and I just really want to be with her. And But I just need to get my life situated, and I need to get it straightened out before I help the other people that I love. Her father says he worries she's come under the influence of people outside the family, people who want her money. Dominique says the decision was all hers. She's anxious to finish her senior year of high school and start training for the year 2000 Olympics. I just hope that people understand that I'm not doing this because I want to. I'm doing this because I have to. There is an income at stake. There is maybe a small fortune at stake. Do you know... Do you know how much you have? I have $1,500 in my pocket. I mean, all the rest belongs to my parents. By law, parents have the right to control the money of a minor child, unless she can persuade a Texas court that she's responsible enough to do it herself now. And the U.S. Gymnastic Federation has agreed to send monthly checks she's owed directly to her. So, two days after she left home, she found herself an apartment, which she shares with her coach, 
She let us see it because she hopes it shows she can handle her own affairs. But her parents won't see it unless they sign that paper. Until then, they'll only see her in court. How do you think it's going to go when you see them for the first time in a courtroom? It'll be tough on me, but I got to be strong and I got to make it through because there's no backing out now. Is there any possibility that you will willingly go back home? No, no. I've come too far to risk everything I have to start over again, to make a life for myself. And I'm not going until this emancipation is signed. Her father wants a jury to hear the case, perhaps hoping a panel of his peers will be more generous about the job he's done raising his family. But that could go the other way, too. Do you know the irony of this? If the court decides that you are entitled to emancipation at the age of 17, it would probably speak pretty well for the job your parents did raising you. Yeah, definitely. I know right now they're probably angry at me, my parents, and they're probably mad at why am I doing this. But I have to say that I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I just want, you know, the right thing for me, and I want to know where my future lies. And I think I should be able to make that decision. And if the jury agrees, it would be an ironic reversal of fortune. The parents could become the child's dependents. If I had the opportunity, I would buy them things and I would, I would help them out. But that would be my choice and my decision. You know, it's not a matter of money. And it's just, I want to be able to control my future and I want to know where it lies. And I mean, I think I have the right to, you know, to do that. Tomorrow, Dominique and her parents may meet face to face. She's scheduled to give a deposition and her parents have a right to be there. Dateline will continue after this message from your local station. Next at 10, a Loyola University worker attacked on campus. Now the university wants her to go, her fight to stay. Then Dominique Mochiani's Chicago past to look at her childhood in the suburbs. Plus, the race for the Senate in Illinois turns even nastier tonight at 10. your way it just tastes better morning guys know how much cereal you'd have to eat to get the vitamins in one bowl of total nice bowl total has 100 percent of 10 vitamins and minerals we'll take the total total one bowl 100 percent at snack wells we like to think that snacking shouldn't just be about treating yourself but about treating yourself well. And it shouldn't simply be about satisfying your hunger, but about satisfying your hunger for life. In this spirit, Snackwell's introduces new mint cream. Luscious cookies covered with mint cream and smothered in chocolatey richness. Yet amazingly, reduced in fat. So they're simply better for you. The all-new Snackwell's. Live well, snack well. Hi, I just called to say I love you. I'm deeply touched. Wrong number. At least now you don't have to pay for it. Jane, switch to Sprint for a dime anytime. And calls under 30 seconds are free. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP now. When they said the world didn't need another nose strip, we said, oh yeah? How about making one that's contoured for a good fit, giving it a centering bump so you know where to place it, and using a skin-friendly adhesive? Introducing Clear Passage, an ergonomically advanced nose strip designed to relieve the symptoms of nasal congestion. Oh, and one last thing. How about having it made by the maker of Afrin Nasal Spray, the people who know more about the nose than anyone. New Clear Passage. We know noses. Music. Coming to Jane in four, Ready, camera two. Three, two, one. And dissolve the two, cue Jane. And now here's Katie Couric with a look at what's coming up tomorrow on Today. Katie? Thanks, Jane. Yes, it's that time of year again. We're going to check in with author Ann Rice. Also, the governor's race in Minnesota. You won't believe who's running and body slamming his opponents into the ground. So those stories and more tomorrow on Today. Stone? Thanks, Katie. Now let's take a look at a story we're working on for a special Dateline Tuesday. She said she had hundreds of personalities, and some had committed horrible crimes. 
I had come to, uh, to believe that I was killing children. A doctor said he could help, but was he the cure or the cause? Was he uncovering her lost memories or creating them? He said, have you ever eaten people? And I said, yes. Who could she believe? Who do you believe? March 27th, he started me on the medication. Less than a week later, I'm saying I'm eating people. The story on Dateline Tuesday. And that's Dateline for Monday. We'll see you again for Dateline Tuesday at 10, 9 central. Now stay tuned for your local news. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us at NBC News, good night. Stand by to roll in. Change. Very nice work, everybody. See you Change. back.